God and let the people of God say amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program that we do every week uh, from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization. Uh, it's good to be back to share the word of God. Today, we are going to be talking about Mara. Mara. And um, we've divided it into two parts. So we are going to do the first part today uh, because I don't want to be in the habit of having to rush through Bible lessons. That, that's not right. So we have divided it into two. So today we are doing resolving a bitter situation, starting with a change from the inside. We are going to unpack this and, um, and work on it as the Holy Spirit has helped me to, to, to do during the week. But before we start, let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. Holy Spirit, I release myself unto you. Father, I step out of your way. Use me as your chosen vessel. And Father, let your light come to every heart that will watch and listen to this program. And in the end, Holy Spirit, use this program to open people's eyes and to draw them into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Like I said, we are doing the first part, which is Mara resolving a bitter situation starting with a change from the inside and the reason for that is when trouble hits when there's problem we and i mean all of us we tend to go uh, especially believers the first thing we want to do is god deal with this situation take this problem away yada 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 you see but God has a different way of dealing with problems in his children's lives. God will never allow any problem to hit his children if he's not going to do some good works in their personal life, you see, to make them better people. So God always starts the resolving or resolution of any problem starting with the individual involved first then the situation itself uh, so today our case study is going to be Moses Moses and our text foundation text is from the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 22 we stop at 24 Exodus 15 22 to 24 so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? You see, Mara can be described in these two short sentences. Number one, a bitter taste. That is talking about a person because it takes a person to taste. Okay? Then the second one, a bitter place. That is talking about the situation, where the individual is, a bitter taste and a bitter place. Mara is a bitter taste for a person because, watch this, the flavor is not good for the internal wellness of the person involved. You see, I'm here to see somebody who is happy because they were sick. Or they're happy because a loved one died. No, it's a bitter taste, you see. Then the second one, Mara is a bitter place situationally. 
because the needed resource is presently unusable for the person involved. You see, a sister was telling me during the week um, about her husband's grandmother when she passed in the hospital. And she said, her husband turned to the doctors and said, can't you do something? Do something. And they said, we're sorry. There's nothing we can do. She's gone, you see. At that, in that situation, the hospital was useless. The doctors, they couldn't do anything. They have the best of medis medications and all that. But right there, it was Mara because the resources were there but they could not be used, you see. So we are going to talk about this Mara because it happens to everybody. You can't wish it away, you can't pray it away. No, it's part of life. So what is the meaning of Mara? Mara literally means bitter, that's it. The literal meaning of Mara is bitter. Now, the Bible places Mara, in this case, which is a geographical place, uh, in the wilderness of Shaw. Now, if you, come in, if you go back to the book of Exodus, from where the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea to get to the wilderness of, of Shaw, it, it took them three days' journey. So these people had been walking for three days with no food, with no water. And the first water that they found after three days of, uh, after crossing the Red Sea, and it, the first water they found was useless. They could not drink it. It was bitter. Can you imagine? We're talking desert, okay? Dry place. So you can, I'm trying to say that to, to put you in the situation, to, 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 to have it a, a feel, if you will, of how the children of Israel, how they were feeling. Now, why Mara is biblically and literally known to be a geographical place for us, 21st century people, Mara is mostly, watch this, a figurative situation, okay? A figurative situation. If you live in the United States like I do, there is no place called Mara that I know of, you see? If you lived in some uh, other uh, part of the world, I don't, I've, I've not heard of any other place other than the biblical Mara. So when we say Mara, we're talking situations of life, troubles of life, okay? Moving on. What is a figurative Mara to an individual? What is it? It's anything that is sudden, sad, bitter, painful, and unwanted situation that happens in our lives. For example, financial collapse. Who prays for that, huh? But it happens. People lose their jobs. They lose their homes. They, they, they lose everything they've put into their account for one reason or the other. And boom, they're scrambling, you know, to stay afloat. Marriage will co collapse. Marriage breaks down. Who prays for that? Death. Barrenness. And so many things, you see. Things that you didn't plan for, things that you didn't see coming, it just come, bam, like that. That situation is called Mara, it's figurative. What can cause Mara in an individual's life? Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 12. Learning from the Master and the Lord himself, is the perfect teacher, is the perfect example, he never gets it wrong. Jesus gave us the principle. For there are eunuchs who were born that way. And there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others. And there are those who choose 
to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. You see, now in this um, uh, in this uh, Bible passage, the the Pharisees and the Jews they came to Jesus and they were asking Jesus about divorce. You see. And uh, they said, oh, Moses asked us to, to give certificate of divorce and all that. Of course, they were trying to trick Jesus. And they, they were asking Jesus uh, if that was right, if, if it's okay to divorce. And Jesus was giving them answers to this. And by the time Jesus gave them answer that you cannot divorce your wife uh, uh, because uh, if, if you marry a woman, that that has been divorced you have committed adultery and all that and all that they said this is a hard teaching this is difficult and jesus said it's not for everybody and that's when he mentioned this verse that there are eunuchs so jesus was talking in the context of marriage but by doing so he gave us the principle of how people, uh, of how problem comes into people's life, uh, people's lives, or how, how people find themselves in problems. Why Jesus was addressing a different situation, through this passage, he gave us an insight into three causes of Mara. Why the subject of discourse was different from that of Moses and the Israelites, the principles are the same. The first cause that Jesus gave us through the eunuch uh, narrative, it's natural infliction. Some people are born with their afflictions. They are born with it. And some were born into their affliction. You see, the affliction was already waiting for them. This is not because they did anything wrong. Please, let me say that again. It is not because they did anything wrong. No. But because we live, are you ready for this? In an imperfect world. This, not, this is not a perfect world, folks. Have you noticed that? It's a crazy place. This was the case with Moses and the children of Israel. They came to a place called Mara that had bitter waters. Mara was already there. Moses and the children of Israel just walked into Mara. You see what I'm saying? Let's go to the book of John, chapter 9. It's one of my absolute favorites in the Bible. Verses 2 to 3. And I love this, my brother, so much. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, Meaning, teacher, who sinned? You see, they want to blame somebody. This man or his parents, that he was born blind. Can you believe that? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, none of them, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. You see that? The people that were born blind, people that were born lame, it's not because they sinned or their parents. No. Things just happen. That's a natural infliction. Okay? What is the remedy if your Mara is by natural infliction? It's not your fault. You were born into that situation. Or you were born with it. And it's a Mara. It's Bira. What do you do? Here is the remedy. Are you listening? Watch me. Listen. Don't blame God. No. Do not. The devil will want you to blame God. Don't. The devil is a liar. Okay? And another thing. Are you watching me? Don't hate your life because of your situation. No, don't. Don't. Rather, are you ready? 
ask God for the grace to bear your situation. I'm telling you from personal experience, God will give you that grace. I'm telling you. Ask God to give you the grace. And decide to reach out to other people from your pain. Reach out to others and share your experience, your Mara, with them so they can learn one or two things from you. Believe me, your Mara is a powerful ministry. If you let God use it, it's for the glory of God. It's not good. The situation is not good, but God can bring something good out of your Mara, okay? If you have this kind of an attitude, not to blame God, but to ask for grace and reach out to other people, this is what God will do. It will get God involved in your situation faster, okay? Rather than why, 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 don't do that. God will get involved in your situation and make a way out for you the best way he knows how. That doesn't mean God will take away that situation. No. But the best way for you, God will find a way out for you. The best way he knows how. This was not the case for the children of Israel, unfortunately, because they just kept complaining against Moses and against God. And God got angry with them. But that's a different lesson. Okay? So when nature gives you a bad hand, Look up to the God with a good hand. Let me repeat that bread on the go. When nature deals you a bad hand, look up to the God with a good hand. Amen. Moving on. The second way Mara can come into people's life is by external infliction. Some people find themselves in afflictions because of the evil actions of others. They receive the consequences of the evil choices of another person, you see. They become the victims of another person's vile, wicked, irrational, and intentional executed plan. You see, example in the Bible, David. Oh my goodness. Can you, can you believe that? There be the four people. But it's just to let us know that if you don't give yourself to the Holy Spirit, the devil can, he can use you like that. I'm telling you. You see, David plotted uh, the assassination of Uriah. Can you imagine that? David. Let's go to the book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Verse 14, we stop at 15. In the morning, it happened that David wrote a letter to Joab. Joab was his army general. And sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, watch this. Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest battle and retreat from him that he may be struck down and die. Now, if you are familiar with the Bible, if you're a Bible student, you will know that's a very sickness, sickness story. Uh, but let me paraphrase for the uh, sake of, of those who, who are not uh, so conversant with that story. David uh, found this man's wife, Uriah. Uriah was one of the soldiers uh, in David's army. They were at battle fighting for the nation. And his wife was having a shower, minding her own business in her own house. Behind their house, she, she's having a shower. Now, remember, we are not talking now that we have a shower indoor. You will have your shower outside at the time. She was minding her own business. And David was walking on, a balcony, on his balcony of his palace. And somehow was able to see this lady having a shower. Well, cut a long story short. He sent for this lady and, um, yeah, slept with 
her and she became pregnant. And then David called for the husband who was serving the nation in, 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 at one front and brought him back home and tried to trick him to go to his wife. But the man was so loyal to the country, he, he didn't leave the palace. Eventually, so David came up with this sinister scheme and gave him a letter to give to his army general that would kill the man. Can you believe that? So Uriah was innocent. Bathsheba, I don't know why some people like to blame Bathsheba. She didn't do anything wrong. She could not argue with the king because at the time, the king was like God. You see? So these two were victims of David's madness at the time. Uriah died. Can you believe that? Uriah was killed. So in this situation, the untimely death of Uriah and the, the, the pain that Bathsheba had to go through, that her husband was dead and she was pregnant by the king that she didn't look for, you know, all this came as a result of external infliction that David brought into their lives. So if you have seen yourself receiving the short end of the stick because you got involved with somebody or you, you come from the same family with somebody or you worked with somebody and they inflicted pain in your life. Here is what you need to do. Are you ready? Listen. Forgive them. You say, Josephine Zaya, what? Did you know what? Yeah, forgive them. Okay? If you are finding forgiveness difficult, I'm not going to tell you that it's easy. No. Some people will say, just forgive. No. It depends on the degree of the pain and the hurt. Now, if you are finding forgiveness difficult, here's what you are going to do. You are going to pray to God to help you to forgive, and he will. Okay? Now, study the Bible on the consequences of unforgiveness. That's your assignment. Okay? You want to look at all the Bible passages, what Jesus said will happen if you don't forgive people. This will help you to put things in perspective. Okay, then move away from the one who has hurt you, if possible. And I've put that there because the hurt may come from your mother or from your father or from your husband or your wife or people you can't just move away from. So I'm not, I'm not advocating that their families break up. No, that's not what I'm saying. I said if it's possible, okay? But if it's people that you, you, you cannot walk away from, your husband, your wife, your mom, uh, your siblings, God will give you the wisdom to, nav to navigate that, that, that kind of a road, okay? God will always give you the wisdom not to put yourself at their mercy to hurt you again. But if it's somebody that you can walk away from, do why? To avoid a repeat performance. And when you move away from them, that doesn't mean you have not forgiven them. By you actually trying to move away from them, it may spur them into changing their evil lifestyle from inflicting pains on other people. And that would change their lives and that would help their uh, would be victims, people that would have been their victims, you see. So the freedom to choose means people can choose to be tools of evil. It's the power of freedom. And some people just choose to use it wrongly to attack other people, which is very sad. Moving on. The third way, now we've talked about you. The first way Mara can happen is by natural infliction. The second way is by external infliction. The third way, based on the principle that Jesus gave us, is personal infliction. And I can testify on that too. I'm telling you, I'm no angel. Uh, 
Some people find themselves in afflictions because they brought it upon themselves by using, again, the power of freedom of choice. Oh, my goodness. I can tell you all the bad choices, but thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. The power to choose that God has given us, we are free to choose right or wrong, you see. And by doing so, some people have they have used that the power of choice wrongly, thus demanding for afflictions in their lives through their bad choices. And the consequences are rightly supplied. You see, it's like economy. If you, if you, if you did economics, uh, economics in high school, I did, or if you studied it in college or wherever, or you're in business, demand and supply, you see. Example is King Saul. Let's go to First Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13. We stop at 14. King Saul from First Chronicles. So Saul died. This is like Saul's epitaph, which is horrible. Saul died for his unfaithfulness, which he had committed against the Lord, because he did not keep the word of the Lord, and also because he consulted a medium for guidance. But he did not inquire of the Lord. Therefore, he, that is God, killed him and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. Now, let me back up to, um, therefore he killed him because some people, they, they, like, to, they like to pick holes. They will say, oh, that contradicts uh, that Saul died in battle. Uh -uh. There is no contradiction in the Bible. The Bible is infallible, is inerrant. Um, what that is saying is God allowed Saul to be killed. Okay? So Saul died in battle, but God allowed it. That's simply what that is saying. So we can see that in this case, it was a case of personal infliction on uh, in the life of Saul, he brought it upon himself by forsaking God and going after the mediums, the, the people that, the science or whatever they are called, the science. Uh, he, 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 he went for those people and he got in trouble for that. Now, the remedy, if your Mara was brought upon you by your own hands, you can't blame anybody. You know that, yeah, I did this. I brought it on myself. Here's the remedy. Don't give up on yourself. Let me say it again. Do not give up on yourself. Because God has not given up on you. That's why you are listening to this message, okay? Jesus can forgive you. And he will because he has promised, okay? Okay? Confess. Ask God for forgiveness. And don't go back to that wrong choice again. Now, please listen to this. God forgives us like that when we genuinely ask. I mean, boom, he forgives. But we don't forgive ourselves. I remember it took me 10 years to forgive myself of, of something bad I, I, I did even before I became a Christian. Can you believe that? After I become a child of God, it took me 10 years to come out of that prison. Now, I don't want that to happen to you. So what you want to do is having confessed to God and having forsaken to go back to that bad choice. Ask God to help you to forgive yourself. It's very important. Ask God to help you to forgive yourself. And memorize Bible verses that speaks of how God has forgiven you. Very important. I love this quote from Pastor Rogers. It says, confession and conquest are linked together. You see, confession strengthens your faith 
and your faith strengthens your confession. They are linked together. So when the devil comes to you to remind you, do you remember what? Just pull one of those Bible verses and use it against the devil, okay? And that is how you can counteract Satan's accusations. Whenever the devil tries to bring up your past mistakes, you want to shut that stinking mouth down, just pull out a Bible verse. For therefore there is now no condemnation for them that, 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 that are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8 verse 1, you see. Uh, 2 Corinthians, I believe, 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm telling you, before you finish it, the devil is on, he's gone. He's a coward. He's a coward. So don't let the devil remind you of, of the abortions of the past, of, uh, of, of uh, stealings of the past. Of, no, 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 no. If the devil brings up your accusation, you bring the counter, you bring the counter uh, accusation. Bring the antithesis. And you see the devil go away from you. So it's very important to look for those Bible verses and memorize them that remind you that Jesus has forgiven you. Okay? To choose biblically is to choose brightly. To choose biblically, biblically is to choose brightly. So we have covered the three causes of Mara based on Jesus' principles, as he taught us from the discourse of the eunuchs. The first one is natural infliction, the second one is external infliction, and the third one is personal infliction. So if you are at Mara right now, it's an opportunity to look inwards first. Look inwards. Before you start asking God, oh Lord, fix this, fix this. Uh -uh. What needs to be fixed? Amen. Because God wouldn't have allowed that struggle to hit if he doesn't have something that he wants to fix in you. Okay? The Mara drama, and I call it the Mara drama, didn't change the Israelites. And so, watch this. All the adult generation that came out of Egypt, they all died in the wilderness. I'm telling you. They all died except two people. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb. Those are the only two people. The rest, two million people, they all died one after the other. Only their children and Joshua and Caleb. Even Moses didn't make it. Can you believe that? Why? Because they wouldn't just stop whine, 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 complaining to God. They didn't take the opportunity for God to change them. And God said, I can't take you people to, to the promised land. Uh-uh. You are too crazy for me. And he allowed all of them to die in the wilderness. God doesn't want you to die in your Mara, but he wants to use it to make your life better, not better. Okay? God allows Mara in our lives to make us better people, not better people. And that's why he allows trouble to hit sometimes. It's not because Isaiah 59 1 says, it's not because his hands are too short that he cannot deliver, or his ears are heavy that he could not hear. No, no. However, for that to happen, for you to receive that deliverance, uh, deliverance is got to be God's way, which is internal, that is you, me, Josephine Zion. God wants to change me when trouble hits first. Then after I'm changed, then he will change my situation. That is God's way of resolving Mara, okay? The blessings that can come out of Mara are enormous. You cannot even count them. Don't miss out on them. Let God use your bitter experience to make of you a brighter opulence. That's the whole point. Let God use your bitter experience to make of you a brighter opulence. Now, if you say, um, I'm not a Christian, 
and I'm going through stuff, I'm glad you are watching this. Because this is the beginning of the, uh, the solution to your situation. If you let God work in your life. You see, all I've been saying cannot do you any good unless you come to the first, the beginning point, which is you are to realize that you are a sinner. If you are not a, a born again child of God, if you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you may be going to church and not be saved. So what you want to do is to first give your life to Jesus because Jesus is only obligated to those who are his. If you are not my child, I can't pick you from the road and come feed you in my house. That is kidnapping. Okay? But my children, I'm obligated to feed them. It's the same thing. Okay? So Jesus will not chase you with healing or with uh, resolving your conflict until you make yourself his child. He's done everything for you. All you need to do is to receive the work that he has done on the cross. Now, if you are willing to start that journey, stay. When I finish this lesson, a link will come at the end of uh, this lesson. Click on that. It will take you to Want to Know Jesus page of our ministry. And we've explained uh, what it means, salvation. I believe... Uh, 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 we've been working seriously on, on our website uh, with some short movies explaining salvation and all that. And you, 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 will, you will see in a nutshell what it means to become a child of God because that's the whole beginning of working in resolving any situation in your life. And I pray that the Lord will arrest your heart even as you begin the journey. In Jesus' name. Before I let you go, let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word, which has come again to us. Oh, Lord, shed your light upon our hearts. Oh, Lord, help us to be open to your correction, to what you are pointing out in our lives. So you'll be able to change us from the inside and to give you the, perm the permission to go ahead and change our situations. Thank you, Father Lord. For in Jesus' name, I've prayed. Amen. Amen. Like I said, we will finish this lesson next week. Okay? I will see you next week. Only if Jesus has not split the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good news reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry.